Good evening. Happy Wednesday. Uh, we are calling this meeting to order at 7.02 p.m. Let's start by our Pledge of Allegiance. If you can, unmute yourself and place your right hand on your heart. Let's begin. A Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. And to God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Thanks, team. Make sure to mute yourselves again, and I will turn it over to Veronica, who will share our public comments. Hi, everyone. Um, I wanted to just first say that we have a total of 33 comments. And myself and the school committee clerk, Mariana Seja, will be splitting up the reading. Um, I will start with say, stating comment number and the person who submitted the comment. And then can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Okay. So comment one from Stacy Amaral from residing at 50 Botswain Way, 401 in Chelsea. I am thinking of Chelsea Opportunity Academy as the school of ongoing learning. As the grandmother and guardian of one of COA's students, I see firsthand how it works and it does work. My grandson who grew up, um, sorry, I lost my screen. <laughs> my grandson who grew up in Chelsea and started school at the ELC is a bright young man who struggled in quote, regular classes, even on a 504 and IEP. Last year, he recognized his need for a different way of being in school and applied on his own to COA. At the moment, he is on track to graduate at the beginning of June. I know that this would not have been the case if he didn't have the support of the staff at COA. My grandson is not alone in his need for an alternative school experience. As someone who with others started a dropout prevention program for Latino students in Worcester, I feel particularly well suited to speak to the need of, for alternatives. COA works because of the staff. They are dedicated and joyous to their, in their tasks. They meet the students where they are and with them help find their, the path forward. Clearly we now have an opening towards creativity in education. With the new funding from the state, we need to be very wise in how we use the money. If we know that some of the old ways didn't work, we need to look at new paths. As a veteran of the old ways and school reform, I feel more creative approaches are called for. COA is clearly one of these. COA needs the support of the Chelsea community as a whole, of the school committee in particular, so that all kids find a path to a healthy and successful life. Comment two, um, submitted by Adam Aronson, residing at 550 Victory Road, Quincy, Mass. School committee members, superintendent, CPS staff, students, parents, and our Chelsea community, good evening. My name is Adam Aronson, and I am the coordinator of the Chelsea Opportunity Academy. In my short seven years as part of the CPS family, I have won a lot of, I have worn a lot of hats, a track coach, special education teacher, and dean of students at the high school, then to a design team member, lead teacher, C2 union rep of COA, and now in my current role as coordinator, the logistics guy. Most of us know what COA is. We are a school and we are a family. When a decision is made in our school from policy changes to school functions, all are consulted, especially students. It is with that spirit that today that I speak on behalf of the entire COA family, some of which sit before you today. We are very excited to see that COA, that a COA build, school building is currently in the 2019-2020 budget proposal. Here is what this means to our COA family and our neighbors at CHS. COA core value number one is that in our school, every day is a new day. Students and staff will welcome every day as an opportunity to learn and grow. 
In every quarterly, in every quarterly student survey, our students report that having to walk the same hallways and sit in the same classrooms that they had so many challenges in is one of our, the main reasons that they miss school at COA. We have promised them a fresh start and a new building fulfills this promise. This also means a lot for the continued partnership between COA and CHS. Next year, we will upskill from 100 students to 150. It would be impossible to do so in our current location at CHS. Currently, we take up five classrooms at CHS. As staff, we are happy to be flexible team players. However, when we have high attendance days and students request to leave big early because of our space is too crowded, that is when we must act. It simply is not possible to run our school within CHS while upscaling without taking um, over more of CH CHS's already cramped space. Thank you for your time and your continued support of our little school that could. Thank you from me personally and from all members of the COA family. Comment number three, Joel Fagerberg, 21 Brookline Street, 402 Cambridge. To whom it may concern. As a third grade inclusion classroom teacher at the Frank M. Sokolowski School, I believe our number one priority for the budget should be to expand access, opportunity, and equity for all students in our schools. I believe all other efforts to increase student achievement rest upon this foundation. Moreover, as teachers in a gateway city, I believe it is our moral obligation to ensure our schools are meeting the needs of all our students. This means having robust special education and English learner staffs at our school. There is nothing that can replace the impact these members have on the lives and education of these students. Not only can they use their teaching expertise to make learning more accessible for their students, they can also create important relationships with students that make them feel safe, cared for, and respected in school. Furthermore, increased staff with expertise in these fields will make inclusion efforts more successful. This results in more inclusive and equitable classrooms where students on IEPs and students learning English can participate and learn more. Increased special ed and EL staff will also positively impact students who are not on those caseloads. Many teaching, uh, sorry, many teaching and classroom management strategies that may seem targeted to students on IEPs or students learning English actually benefits all students. These strategies normalize a classroom culture in which it is acknowledged that all students do not learn the same way. This results in a classroom that is ultimately more student-centered. Also, increased special ed and EL staff means better student-to-teacher ratios. This means more individualized attention for all students, less disruptions, and a safer classroom environment. Expanding access, opportunity, and equity depends on creating classrooms where all students are supported and valued. I believe that starts with having teachers who best know their needs and can best respond to them. Our teachers and their families depend on our schools to help kids learn and grow no matter what challenges they may face. We must increase special ed and EL staff to meet that goal. Comment number four, Sarah Ruddy, 100 Stockton Street, apartment 156 in Chelsea. Dear Dr. Abeda, I am a 10th grade in inclusion ELA teacher at CHS. This is my third full year. I work with a co-teacher and we share our classroom with some of the most wonderful, loving, curious, tough, and vulnerable students at CHS. Many of these kids have IEPs and are able to overcome significant challenges to grow and achieve an ELA and pass the MCAS every March. They amaze us every year with what they can do. When our 30 students in our classroom, when there are 30 students in our classroom, as was the case in two of our three sections this school year, uh, our other section had 26. 
Kids are put at a disadvantage the minute they walk through the door. They are crowded into desk and often are shoulder to shoulder. Uh, through two, though two teachers who love to circulate and work with these kids one-on-one -on -one during student-centered tasks, the room becomes impossible to move in. Kids are restless enough as teenagers, they're supposed to be. When they're crammed into a space like this, they struggle to focus and stay in task. 10th grade inclusion ELA is an um, MCAS subject and we start a huge disadvantage with, the, with these class sizes. We won't be able to make, to keep making gains if we can't get these classes sizes down. And that's just the physical problems of an understaffed school. When we send kids to a class in a tiny room with 29 other kids, we also send them a message, nobody cares if they succeed. You know, you know and I know that that isn't true. And we spend a lot of time showing kids how much we do care. But when a school our size has classes that large and deans have caseloads of 500 and counselors and social workers have only slightly less. Sometimes I wonder if, if I were these kids, would I believe it? I am amazed every day at how much our school does with what we have, but I also feel it is unsustainable at the level and certainly will be more so if cuts continue. Fully staffing schools by allocating more budget money to direct contact staff, teachers, counselors, deans, behavioral specialists, paraprofessionals, librarians, sends our kids a strong message that we want them to succeed and that we care deeply about their futures. That is the most valuable message these kids can get right now in this, in a, in this world that tells them every day how little they matter as their community rebuilds. Thank you for your time. Comment number five. Daria Carey, 21 Ridgewood Road, Cumberland, Rhode Island. Good morning. I am writing with regard to Chelsea Public Schools budget and the benefits of the arts for children. Not only the benefits of the arts for academic and personal outcomes, such as motor skill development, visual spatial skills, executive function, like working memory, mental flexibility, and self-control, but the benefits of the arts for the social emotional aspect as well. Arts participation is associated with numerous positive academic and personal outcomes, such as higher grades and test scores, enrollment in post-secondary education, and attainment of a bachelor's degree, and a higher level of literacy and civic engagement. Arts participation also promotes children's social emotional development by fostering positive social skills, regulation of emotions, openness in a, in, to innovation, and connections with new people and ideas. Art instruction can encourage school participation and attendance and lead to great, greater student self-esteem and motivation. These positive changes can improve overall classroom climate as well. The benefits of art participation might be greatest for children who are economically disadvantaged, such as many of our students living in Chelsea. The favorable outcomes associated with high levels of, art, of arts participation are particularly strong to students from families with lower socioeconomic status. For example, arts participation lowers cortisol levels, a biological marker for stress for, um, for low income preschoolers and kindergartners. Young people from poor communities also tend to benefit from having one or more, or more projects that strengthen their sense of self and connect with their peers and sh that share interests. Now more than ever, the arts are a necessary outlet in education for children, especially, in, especially the young children we foster to at the John Silver Early Learning Center. Many schools are incorporating art therapists. Art therapy can be used as a complement to traditional mental health treatment. The aim is to manage behaviors, process feelings, reduce stress and anxiety, and increase self-esteem. 
Creating art can be used to relieve stress and relax your mind and body. As this terrible pandemic continues and has much, it has such a detrimental um, effect on our economy, I implore you to not only keep the adventurous art program that we have in Chelsea, but to explore the avenues that the arts can encourage and promote the well-being of our of our vulnerable students. Thank you for your time. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay. Comment number six from Nina Larry resides at 37 6th Street, Medford, Mass. Um, I am a teacher at Chelsea High School and I am writing to let you know how critical it is that the Chelsea Public Schools have adequate staffing. When our schools don't have the teachers, paraprofessionals, and support staff they need, student learning is negatively impacted. My first year teaching in Chelsea Public Schools, I had classes of 32, 31, and 29. When classes are this large, teachers struggle to provide adequate support to students and turn students, and in turn, students are the ones who suffer. Please do not allow our schools to be understaffed. Our students deserve a great education without reasonably sized classes and access to support staff. We are not meeting the needs of our students. We owe it to our students to make sure our schools are fully staffed. Thank you. Comment number seven from Beth Crowley resides at 7 Forrester Street, Salem, Mass. Good evening. My name is Beth Crowley and I am a sixth grade science teacher in the Chelsea School District. I wanted to express my sincere gratitude for having the opportunity to work in Chelsea. Working with the students that I have has been such a wonderful experience and I look forward to continuing my career in the district. I'm writing to stress my support of the budget, especially to communicate how important it is to have quality staff to support our students. Perhaps even more now than ever, with the current situation and the surge of the coronavirus, it is going to be vital to have a solid support system for our students when they return to school in August. Any kind of cuts or positions is devastating to our school community and we are just not able to give the quality education our students deserve without the proper resources. Please take the consideration of our students, families and staff when you are making decisions about the budget. Thank you. Comment number eight from Brittany Fitzgibbons resides at 109 Olive Ave in Malden, Mass. My name is Brittany Fitzgibbon and I teach history at Chelsea High School. My priority for the budget is maintaining and increasing the number of adults working directly with our students in schools. Maintaining teacher levels is critical to student safety and student academic growth. In my fourth period US one history class, I teach 30 freshmen. My classroom was so overly full that when they asked if I could fit another freshman into my class, we literally did not have enough room, tables, chairs, or Chromebooks, so instead he stayed in a 10th grade history class. This is exacerbated by the fact that they are so few freshman history teachers that scheduling students with particular needs, like students who need preferential seating or benefit from two adults in the room, or are unable to be with certain other students is nearly impossible as demonstrated by that poor freshman who ended up in a class too advanced for him. Another challenge you have to consider is that each guidance counselor is responsible for scheduling hundreds of students, which leaves them little time to support the SEL needs of students who would most benefit from their expertise and a close relationship. How can we as teachers and counselors support the collective and individual trauma of returning students with these numbers of students? How can you expect us as a staff to transition back into the classroom after our own terrible pandemic experience if we are walking into a situation where we are being set up to fail? In addition to the emotional and physical safety concerns of overcrowded classrooms amid 
coronavirus, students are not getting the support or attention they need. When my freshman classes needed to turn in their final essays for quarter three, I knew it was frankly impossible to support every student. I had senior AP history students with a free fourth period come in to help students complete their work because even with grouping, I cannot help all students. This exhausting scenario, coupled with our school being a guinea pig for every new bu buzzword initiative, contributes to our terrible turnover rate, meaning our students lose out on the most experienced teachers and guidance counselors. If you expect to see the kind of MCAS gains that you saw for the class of 2021, then you need to reduce class sizes and counselor loads at the high school and all Chelsea public schools. Staff reductions hurt everyone. Students, teachers, support staff, custodians, and cafeteria workers. It is unforgivable, unforgivable to cut teachers without cutting from central office and administration. We do not need dozens of instructional coaches, assistant superintendents, and other adults who are not directly working with students. They are not even directly working with teachers every day. Our students deserve better, allocate money to hiring more teachers, counselors, deans, behavioral specialists, and paraprofessionals. Thank you. Comment number nine from Valerie Smith resides at 159 Bloomingdale Street in Chelsea, Mass. Dear esteemed colleagues in education, my name is Valerie Smith. I have been a kindergarten teacher at the Silver Early Learning Center for the past 20 years. Prior to this time period, I was a paraprofessional in the Chelsea school system. I am also a lifelong Chelsea resident and a graduate of Chelsea Public Schools. I am writing to urge you all to fully fund the 2020-2021 school budget as it was presented. Our students deserve to have fully staffed schools in order to maximize their additional opportunities and experiences. It takes all of us to educate and care for our students. Our students come to us with various levels of background knowledge and educational experiences. It is imperative that we provide these students with the best instruction possible where they can receive appropriate detailed attention and intervention. I have seen how difficult it is when teaching staff, which includes specialists, guidance counselors, social workers, etc., is reduced and class sizes increase. Students suffer both educationally and emotionally. As we continue to navigate these unprecedented times, it is our obligation to ensure that the students of Chelsea receive the quality of education we have all worked so hard to deliver. I appreciate the work you do on behalf of our students and wish to thank you for providing an opportunity for me to share my thoughts. Comment number 10 from Katie Delvo. I am a second grade teacher at Hooks where I have been teaching for the past six years. Thank you for, I am a, sorry. Thank you for all the work you are doing for our schools and students. I wanted to make two comments with regard to the budget. First, thank you for working to retain current positions for the upcoming school year. It is essential that teaching and support positions are retained so our students can have as much support as possible in the fall whether that is online or in person. Second, thank you for continuing to advocate for the Student Opportunity Act funds. Our students will greatly benefit from the additional special education and English language teaching positions, as well as the additional support staff, um, librarians, nurses, parent liaison, social, work, social workers, etc. Your work towards securing those funds is greatly appreciated and vital for student success. Thank you again for all that you do. Stay safe, Katie. Comment number 11, Jamie Connors, teachers, teacher at the ELC. Dear school committee members, my name is Jamie Connors and I am a teacher for the Pu Chelsea Public Schools. It is an honor to be an educator for the Chelsea Public Schools. I work alongside the most dedicated and driven educational professionals. We have all worked tire tirelessly 
to adapt to the new distance learning plan to provide our students the most effective instruction and support possible during this pandemic. On behalf of the Chelsea Teachers Union, I ask that you approve the budget presented by the superintendent to ensure our students continued success. Thank you. Comment number 12, Therese Bova, 5 Stone Street, Saugus. Dear school committee members, I hope you and your families are healthy and safe. I am writing in the hope that you will vote favorably for the least level funding, for at least level funding for our school community. As you know, our teachers work tirelessly to not only educate the child, but consider the entire family's needs as much as we can, as demonstrated during this awful time. Our teachers and educational system must be a priority. Your work as school committee members is appreciated by all. Comment number 13, Amy Klein. Dear members of the Chelsea School Committee, my name is Amy Klein and I am a first grade teacher at the Early, Early Learning Center. I have been working for the Chelsea Public Schools for almost 20 years. I am writing today to consider the importance of continuing the fund for our current staff, which is vital to educate the students of Chelsea. The students and families in our city value and rely on each member of the various schools and now more than ever, we need to continue to be there for them. Please consider allocating sufficient funds to support the current staff. We understand these are unprecedented and difficult times for many, but we cannot afford to make the future of our city bear the burden of not providing them with the quality education they deserve. Thank you for your efforts and hearing my concerns. Comments number 14, uh, Katerina Korokova, 60 Myrtle Street, second floor, Somerville. As a teacher for, um, as a teacher for has worked, who has worked at the high school Sorry, I was muted there for a second. Comment number 14, Katerina Korokova, 16 Myrtle Street, second floor, Somerville. As a teacher who has worked for the high school for five years, I believe, no, I know it is crucial for funding to be allocated in such a way that ensures that we maintain an equitable student-teacher ratio in our classrooms and provide students with quality support staff. Every single one of our children matters. Every single one of our children matters. To limit the number of educators, paraprofessionals, and support staff would be to do a gross disservice to our already vulnerable student population. Our students have the potential to be teachers, doctors, lawyers, lawmakers, engineers, thinkers, and tinkers, tinkerers. And when you shove them in droves into classrooms where the teacher is overwhelmed by the sheer number of students, we strip them of these future opportunities. Our students deserve to have what their peers in affluent white communities have. Smaller classroom sizes and individual attention uh, Sorry, are you guys getting static for me? Yeah. Do you want me to repeat this last comment? Uh, Veronica, we heard the last comment. Oh, okay. okay. But there's just a bit of static. Okay. Um, it sounds like you're rustling, like rustling with papers. Okay. All right. So I'll go back where I left off. Um, our students deserve to have what their peers in affluent white communities have, smaller classroom sizes and individual attention from a supportive and knowledgeable teacher. When you overwhelm support staff with a large number of students whom they cannot possibly properly support given the number of needs, you strip our students of the opportunity to be individually bolstered, listened to, cared for, and tend tended to in the way that every child deserves. 
Let me repeat that every single one of our children matters. And when you decrease the number of people who are available physically and emotionally to support them, you decrease the opportunities for a successful future. Understaffing uh, our school will lead to greater teacher and support staff burnout and turnover. A person can only work in a stressful, stressful environment for so long before the nervous system gives out. And it will be it, and it will lead to greater numbers of un, underserved students who are not reaching their potential. By understaffing schools and overwhelming both teachers and the children whom they teach, as well as the guidance counsel, guidance and counselor social workers who support each each in their endeavor, we contribute to a vicious cycle of racism whereby we strip children of the right to an equitable education. We need teachers, we need guidance counselors, we need social workers. We need paraprofessionals, give our students what they deserve because that is our duty to the students that we, just, that we serve and to the staff members whom you support. Comment number 15, Catherine Bandera, 19 Terrace Hall Avenue, Burlington. Dear school committee, to you today to voice my concern about the budget that has been proposed for the 2020-2021 school year. Our students, especially those who have disabilities, deserve to learn in a safe and nurturing environment where their individual needs can be met. The proposed budget, which includes no new positions for Chelsea High School, despite initial assurances that nine positions will be restored or added, will directly harm our students. Its negative impact will be exasperated by the collective trauma and long gap in learning that has resulted from the COVID-19 pandemic. In this time of crisis, it is imperative that we prioritize the needs of students adequately staffing our schools. I work at the high school as a special education teacher in a cold talk classroom. My role in the classroom is to help me grade level curriculum accessible to students on I with IEPs, individual education programs, by providing extra support, designing scaffold catered, scaffold catered to students' individual needs, and making sure students' IEP accommodations are implemented with fidelity. Executing these duties becomes very difficult and sometimes almost impossible when classrooms are filled to capacity because we because desperately needed positions have been cut. This year, my co-teacher and I taught a class of 30 students. A sizable proportion of had IEPs. While it was our job to ensure all students had access to their IEP accommodations and the individual supports they needed to access the curriculum, we often found ourselves preoccupied with logistical woes such as securing enough chairs for a classroom or hunting down enough Chromebooks for students to use since our cart had been broken, had several broken ones. We worked hard to establish highly differentiated learning environment in which students were met were met and students felt individually valued but in a classroom of 30 students we often felt like individual students were slipping through the cracks how do you implement 10 different individualized education programs effectively when you are scrambling to make sure all students have a chair to sit in how do you establish a classroom environment that nurtures students so social emotionally when they constantly have to compete for attention. Our classroom sizes are unsustainable and they do a disservice to our students. Please consider restoring student facing positions that are essential to our students, to their progress and growth. Our students are amazing, resilient individuals and they deserve to return to schools that are prepared to meet their needs. Comment 16 from Christian Kelly resides at 128 Marginal Street, East Boston. Superintendent Almi, members of the school committee, faculty, staff, and students of Chelsea Public Schools, I write to you today on behalf of Chelsea Opportunity Academy, where for the past two years, I have been proud to help build this remarkable school, 
Serving as a founding social studies teacher, union representative, and professional development lead, I urge you to support the budget proposals put forth, not because we want a shiny new building, not because we want less work, but because these proposals will allow us to further maximize our potential to serve our students and to do so without further inconvenience to our colleagues at Chelsea High. Ladies and gentlemen of the school committee, we at COA do not shy away from difficult tasks, rather we seek them out, inspired by our students who do the same. We instill in our students the idea that every day is a new day, a new opportunity of growth, and a new chance to correct the mistakes of the past. A vote in support of COA demonstrates to these students that you believe in them and that they matter to this city and that you are willing to use your vote to assist them in, the, in their fight towards a better future. School committee members, I ask you to fund our school to support the students we seek to serve, many of whom are here tonight. I ask you to support their single mother at COA who has found the confidence to attain her diploma and strive for a better future for herself and for her son. I ask you to support the numerous marginalized students who through our school have found their voices in the Chelsea community and use them advocate for a better tomorrow. I ask you to support COA for all of our students because in the face of lifetimes of abuse, trauma and overwhelming responsibility, they have not given up on their education and everyday fight for their betterment with grit and determination. On behalf of my dedicated colleagues at COA, I can assure you that we see the potential of our students every day. You have the ability today with your vote to have a direct and positive impact on the lives of our students and those who will follow them, enabling us to bring positivity, hope, and a quality education to those striving to achieve the American dream here in the great city of Chelsea. Thank you. Comment number 17 from Karen Pierre Louise resides at 10 Forsyth Street in Chelsea. Hi everyone. I would like to thank all the school leaders and the school committee members for your time and dedication for this budget. Although there has been many adjustments due to this uncertainty of, of funding, it is evident that much care went into the final plan. Seeing as many of the students in the district have been directly been impacted with this crisis, it, is, it makes me glad to know the school is able to help support students and families emotionally with the addition of four social workers and a parent liaison. Hopefully soon we can continue the plan of restoring as Dr. Almi emphasized. The resilience in our community and our educators is moving. Thank you all for your devotion and thought in developing this budget. As a parent and community member, we remain hopeful. Chelsea, Chelsea is strength. Comment number 18 from Helen Titchener resides at 33 Bigelow Street in Brighton, Mass. Hello, I am a teacher at Chelsea High School. I am writing to respectfully request that you add additional school counselors to our budget. Along with adding more teachers to lower class size, I cannot think of a single other change that would have a greater improvement. School counselors help my students with emotional needs, scheduling, motivation, graduation, and applying to college, and especially important resource for students who are first generation college students. Throughout my day as a teacher, I reach out to school counselors when I need support connecting to a student or family. If I need a medication with a mediation with a student and when I am concerned for a student's emotional health or safety. Since the pandemic, I am asking more of school counselors than I did before. Their jobs are expanding and will continue to expand next year, no matter if students are back in the building or learning remotely. School counselors are most effective when they work with students over the course of four years. Adding even one more counselor would help them reach more students and would prevent counselor and teacher burnout. Supporting counselors is being there for students throughout their high school experience. Adding even just one additional position would help the 
help the approximately 100 other students and support staff in the building. Again, I cannot think of a more powerful move to support teachers and students during this challenging time. Thank you for considering my perspective as a teacher and for the work you do supporting our students. Comment number 19 from Andrew Milmore resides in Malden. Dear Chelsea School Committee members, thank you for keeping the budget process as transparent as possible under the circumstances. Thanks as well to Dr. Abeda, Ms. Lamboy, and the central office staff for attempting a realistic fiscal year 2021 budget despite of no funding information from the state. I have been a teacher at Chelsea High School for the past 15 years. Most of my work has been with ninth graders and supporting their transition to high school. In that span, I've worked through the classroom level consequences of so many initiatives and cuts from improved laptop computer ratios to painful staff reductions at the middle schools to the ongoing transition towards restorative justice practices in the high school. Last night's presentation recognized that the most critical mission is teaching and learning and the most valuable resource is our employees. It is obvious that we cannot achieve our mission without fully staffed schools. To focus on current examples at the high school. Number one, the grade nine retention rate will not improve sustainably so long as class sizes hover near 30. Number two, school culture and student behavior have huge effects on teaching and learning. Think of what will happen, what is already happening. If we move away from traditional approaches to student behavior, but without the necessary increases in support staff and professional development that restorative practices require. It's not enough to articulate a new vision of school culture, as good and true as that may be, without building up the real tangible systems to support students and teachers, it will be a recipe for failure. In short, I urge the school committee to only support objectives and initiatives that the, that the district can actually support in terms of time, space and staff levels. Thank you for your consideration. Comment number 20 from Katherine Anderson, resides at 28 Warden Ave in Somerville. Hello, school committee members. I wanted to write to mostly express my thanks for this budget. It prioritizes the social emotional needs of students and keeps resources directly in the classroom in a time of crisis. I feel it shows a commitment to doing what is right for students in the community in a time of difficulty. In particular, the focus on parent liaisons right now demonstrate a responsiveness to the critical need for more community engagement and support. Additionally, I hope that the SOA money does, not, does become available. I again appreciate the district's recognition that students' social emotional needs are the most critical area of concern at this time and would hope that these again be prioritized if only a portion of the funding is available. I applaud the district for transitioning central office positions to social worker positions. In solidarity, Katherine Anderson, um, Vice President of Chelsea Teachers Union. Comment number 21, Melissa Culkin resides at 69 Rogers Ave in Somerville. Honorable school committee members, I am a third grade teacher at the Kelly School. I greatly appreciate the difficult climate in which Chelsea Public Schools finds itself preparing an FY21 budget. I understand the prudence of preparing two budgets, one level budget and one which forecasts the types of things CPS would do if it were fortunate to get partial or full CO SOA funds. Even though I understand all of this, my heart sank when I read there could be a 2.2 million shortfall. My mind immediately went to my special education college, colleagues who already have significant caseloads, my ELL colleagues who are co planning and co-teaching with an extraordinary amount of teachers each day, 
my students who need a boost and benefit from coordinated intervention with a teacher or paraprofessional when, they, when there are enough adults in the room. The gaps that we know are accruing now during distance learning and will need to be addressed next year and years to come. As you move forward with your plans, I implore you to spend the money you do receive, whether it be a level budget or a budget with some version of SOA money, in places where it will have immediate impact on the education the young people of Chelsea receive. We need to keep as many adults as we can directly in front of our children. We cannot magically resource the district. However, we do make magic happen when we keep adults in front of children. Thank you for resourcing as much as possible the magic of CPS. Comments 22, Sam Factor, 8 McNeil Circle, Hop Hopkinton, Mass. Hello, my name is Sam Factor. I am a first year mathematics teacher at CHS. My average class size this year was 27 students. From my firsthand experience, the less students per teacher we have in the classroom, the more individualized attention each student gets. This is one of the many reasons why the increasing number of educators in Chelsea High School is critical. Comment number 23. Jane Abramovich, 12 Cordes Street, Charlestown, Mass. To the public hearing team, <clears throat> thank you for making the budget presentation available publicly yesterday. The teaching community at Chelsea has really appreciated the more transparent and collaborative budget process this year versus previous years. We hope the transparency and in incorporating voices from all staff will continue during and despite the challenging times of this pandemic. In terms of the budget, speaking from the high school's perspective, we understand why this budget was presented as a flat budget at this time. As and when additional funding becomes available beyond ensuring a safe environment in terms of new health requirements, we want to re-echo the needs of the high school to have adequate staff to student ratios, teacher to student and support to student. One of the biggest challenges at the high school is creating and maintaining a safe and respectful learning environment. So any investment such as a new Dean of Supports for students should be prioritized. Either in school or via remote learning, engagement and student outcomes can only flourish with their appropriate and consistent systems and resources. Thank you for your consideration and again, we look forward to a continued transparent budget process now and into the next year. Comment 24, Katie Mazak, teacher at CHS. Chelsea High School needs more teachers, counselors, and deans. Obvious, obviously, we are operating in a new world, but our community relies on our ability to properly welcome and educate all. Classes of 30 and overwhelmingly caseloads for counselors, social workers, and deans, while always problematic, will present even greater mental and physical health issues for students moving forward. The education of our students and the ability to foster community is, the, is of utmost importance. By limiting the funding to, for our schools, we will lose our momentum in increased test scores and student achievement. We do not need another administrative intern. We need caring adults directly working with our students each day. Chelsea is struggling and it is our job to give our community and our students everything we have. We need more. Comment number 25 from Tamara Blake Canty resides at 93 Gloucester Street, Brockton, Mass. Dear Chelsea Public School Committee members, this email is to share my reflection as it pertains to the district's budget. Despite the cuts that were made, I've noted that no cuts were made at the school level. This con concerted action of the superintendent in our central office highlights the their effort to protect the integrity of the work that is being carried out at every school and within every classroom across the district. Teaching, teaching and learning is clearly at the forefront 
of the district's priorities. Furthermore, the superintendent created three family liaison positions, and I am pleased to see that they are still accounted for in her strategic plan to support families. Despite the overshadowing of ominous cuts to our educational budget, I found it noteworthy to highlight a few bright spots. These cuts were contained within central office, leaving our schools to continue another year of great strides in teaching and learning. Respectfully, Dr. Tamara Blake Canty. Comment number 26 from Kellyanne Curley, resides at 19 Willard Street, Malden, Mass. Good afternoon. In this time of uncertainty, I am grateful for the work our community is doing to support one another. It takes the whole community to meet the goals we set for ourselves and our students. I am happy to see that this has been reflected in the proposed budgets. Our students are going to need all of us. While it is devastating to think that we may not receive the additional positions that would bring us closer to our goals, it is important to focus on the future. I am asking for us to think of the students who needs us the most and what we need to do to support them. As an ELL teacher, I could not help but to think of my students as my small groups got larger and, and larger. There is a great need, not for the proposed ELL positions. With the SOA, it felt as though our students were finally being seen and supported. They need to be remembered even more during this crisis. Thank you for everything you do for our students. Comment number 27 from Maureen Perkins resides at 35 Criterion, Criterion Street, Reading Mass, Reading Teacher, Berkwood School. I urge the school committee and school administration to use any funds they can to increase support for students in the classroom, especially by adding a paraprofessional in all primary classrooms. Our students need the support before the COVID-19 pandemic, and it will be even more important as children come back to school next year after a nearly six month hiatus. Thank you. Comment number 28 from Matt Bennington resides at 168 Albion Street in Somerville, Mass. Dear school committee members, I understand how complicated and uncertain these times are, but I urge you to approve level funding for the next school year at minimum. If we receive Student Opportunity Act funds, I hope we can in fact expand our resources for next year, but at minimum, we need to maintain the personnel we have. Studies show that students who do not com complete summer work regress in their skills between grades. For some families, the length of summer has more than doubled this year. We are doing our best to support our students online, but there is no way we can serve them as well at a distance. We are facing our school, we are facing a school year with the highest predictable level of academic need in anyone's lifetime. Our kids need us more than ever. We want to get back into our schools and face this with them. Please approve level funding or greater for our schools. There are hundreds and hundreds of teachers who want to fight back against the effects of the quarantine. We can only do this effectively with your support. Thank you for your time. Comment number 29 from Louise Campanella. I am very grateful that with a $2 million shortfall, there is no reduction in workforce. I applaud central office's intentions of considering the importance of consistent and familiar staff for students on their return to school. Thank you. Louis Campanella, ESL Hooks. Comment number 30 from Maggie hagen Britain resides at 153 Paris Street in East Boston. Dear school committee, when I see the budget proposal, when I saw the budget proposal for next year, I was shocked and dismayed at the fact that there are no new teaching positions for Chelsea High School included. I know that COVID-19 has given the budget a big hit, but it's also given a big hit to student learning. What we need next school year, however that will look, is more teachers in order to help the students catch up and get ahead. This year, as an English one and two teacher for newcomer students in the Bridge Academy, 
I experienced firsthand the way that class size can affect student learning. Many newcomer English 1 students entered CHS between August and December, making my English 1 class swell from 18 students on the first day to 32 students by January. The same thing happened in all five sections of English 1. In contrast, my English 2 classes stayed mostly steady at around 20 students. The amount of individualized help that students can get in a classroom of 20 is worlds apart from what students can get in a classroom of 30. Even for teachers with great classroom management skills, a class of 20 is an infinitely calmer space and much more conducive to student learning gains. These factors are especially important for newcomer students who are learning English, students who may have had interrupted schooling and students with trauma history. When we come back to classrooms, whenever that may be, students will need extra support. Please, we need more teachers. Thank you. Comment number 31 from Elaine Cusick. Dear school committee members, I have been a proud Chelsea Public Schools teacher since 2006. Until 2019, I worked at the ELC. For the past year, I have provided bilingual reading intervention in the Caminos program at the Kelly School. It has been a joy and a privilege to help my youngest students build their skills and confidence as they grow into compassionate, engaged contributors to our community. My students are smart, strong, and resilient. Many of them arrive at school with an opportunity gap. My job along with my, my job along with our families, the rest of CPS staff and our wider Chelsea community is to support their learning and ensure that this does not become an achievement gap. I ask that every consideration be given to the funding formulas in order to maintain supports that ensure equity of access for all learners. These are difficult times. Many in our community are already suffering. Going forward, sacrifices will need to be made. And I expect that CPS will not be immune to this. I ask that as you consider these decisions, you know that CPS teachers respect that these are difficult times and there will be no easy answers. But in that context, I also ask that as much as possible, decisions be made that will give CPS teachers and administrators the funding for and access to the, the tools that we will need in order to give our most vulnerable learners the focused attention that they deserve and, and need in order to succeed. Respectfully, Elaine Cusick. Comment 32, Darby Drafts. Hello, I am a sixth grade teacher in the Caminos program at the Kelly School. It is so sad that our hopes and dreams when, when the Student Opportunity Act passed have, been, have had to been postponed. I understand the need for Dr. Beta to put forward a level budget. I appreciate your consideration of doing all this as this is possible to keep funds for staff who are in front of our students. This includes teachers, paras, and other specialists who service students and especially social workers. Thank you. Comment number 33, Leanne Dorigo. Hello, I would like to advocate for paraprofessionals and teachers assistance jobs in, the Chelsea, in Chelsea during the next budget considerations. They are very often the ones in the classroom assisting the students needing extra help time and as well as the students that are advanced and in needing to be challenged. While the lead teachers are good at differentiating it's often the paras and or assistants that are called upon to aid students that are, both, that are on both ends of the learning curve. They are, er, they are needed during day-to-day -day transitions, test administrations, lunch and door duties, and very often called upon as substitutes. During this time of pandemic awareness, paras and assistants are needed more than ever. Thank you for your consideration, Leanne Dorigo. Right middle, right, um, from Wright Science Technology Academy. And that was the last comment.
Thank you, Veronica and Mariana, for reading the comments from our public um, and to all of the teachers, staff, faculty, community members who are both watching us tonight and um, who submitted comments. Thank you. Thank you for always advocating for our students. Dr. Beta will be responding to these comments tomorrow evening during our meeting again at 7 p.m. Hope to see you there. Um, may I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? Motion. Make a motion to adjourn. Awesome. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a great evening. Thank you. Bye, everyone.